The movie begins with an old man dragging a young woman by the hair through a street that seems to be part of an abandoned neighborhood. A group of young people, two men and a woman, unlock a door from a fancy house. One of them stops the alarm before it can go off. The same person, who looks the most nervous, repeats their rules as they enter the house about not taking any cash and grabbing only things that are below 10 Gs. They are in and out of the house fast. Before they leave, they switch the alarm back on and break the front door window, which activates the alarm sound as they escape. Later, they're driving in their car, smoking pot, chatting. The nervous guy starts telling the other two about another of their friends that's leaving town. They don't seem phased, saying everyone leaves Detroit. Even they were planning to leave for California after the next robbery, with no plans of coming back. The girl tells the nervous guy to come with them, but he says he can't leave his dad. They drop him off at his house, he goes in and heads straight to his dad's study room, where he opens a drawer and returns the key from the house they just robbed. His dad works in home security. The third guy, called Money, goes to fence the things they got in the robbery and doesn't get as much as he hoped. He argues a little with the guy that buys the things from him, but the guy tells him that if he wants money, he should steal money. He gives him a tip about a new job. Money tells his friends all about it. It's a house that belongs to a loner army veteran, secured by the nervous guy's dad, and is in a part of the city that's abandoned. That doesn't raise too much confidence in the other two, so Money explains why they should rob it. Apparently, the vet's daughter was ran over by a rich girl and her family gave him a huge settlement of at least 300k. The girl goes along with the idea much easier than the nervous guy, Alex. He's worried about the consequences of grabbing such a large amount to both them and his dad's company. He walks away. Later that day, the girl, Rocky, sends Alex a text message begging him to do the job for her so she could get someone out. While Alex researches the vet, Rocky is at home with her little sister, her mom and her mom's new boyfriend. Him and her mom are horrible. It becomes apparent that the message Rocky sent Alex was clearly about her sister. When she starts asking her if she wants to go to California with her, she want to get her sister out of their terrible family situation. Alex, Rocky and Money go to stake out the vet's house and neighborhood. Alex and Rocky remain in the car alone. She shares a story from her childhood with him and Alex tells her that he will come with them to California when they finish the job. Money comes back in the car and confirms what they knew about the house when a big dog jumps at the girl's window. An old man calls for the dog and Money tells them that that is the vet. They realize he's blind and have a small argument about how unethical it would be to rob a blind guy. That night, they come back to the neighborhood. The lights are off in the vet's house. They take care of the dog first by feeding it meat with some kind of drug. When they go to open the front door, they realize that the keys Alex had taken from his dad's security company don't work. They check for a side door or a window, but find only a small window which only Rocky can go through. She enters the house and manages to stop the alarm with a remote that Alex gives her. She sees framed pictures of the vet's dead daughter on the mantle. Meanwhile, Alex and Money are waiting for her to let them in. Once inside the house, they start going through it, looking for the safe with the money. Rocky looks through the closet. Money goes on the next floor to chloroform the old vet, so he doesn't wake up. He finds him sleeping in his room with the sounds of a video of his daughter playing, when she was a child. The vet wakes up and turns off the TV, but Money manages to set off the gas. He comes down and the three of them find a bolted door, thinking that Money must be stashed somewhere behind it. Money takes out a gun and thinking that the vet is sleeping, blasts the bolt from the door. Alex, frightened about how having a gun there changes things, decides to leave. He takes his shoes from the stack and goes. Money and Rocky open the door, but the vet appears out of nowhere, asking who's there. The two of them fall silent, but he hears money and starts following his voice as he tries to first lie to and then reason with the old man. He shoots at him once to scare him, but that doesn't stop him. Alex hears the shot outside. The vet grabs the gun from his hands and shoots him in the head. He doesn't know the girl is there too. She hides in the closet. Alex walks into the house and almost bumps into the vet, nevertheless dodging him as he runs around the house bolting the doors and the windows. He hides in the bathroom and texts with Rocky. She tells him where she's hiding and he goes after her. Before Alex gets there though, the vet comes into the closet, takes a part of the drywall to reveal the safe, enters his code, which is fully visible to Rocky, and checks if the money's all there. After he finds out that it hasn't been taken, he closes the safe and walks out, still unaware that Rocky is inside the closet too. Alex comes in the closet and suggests they should call the cops. Rocky disagrees. She opens the safe and takes the money, to his surprise. Alex thinks there are a million dollars there. They decide to leave through the door that was bolted, thinking it would lead them through the basement and to a hatch that leads to the yard. Before they could go through the door, the vet appears from inside and begins dragging Money's body to a different part of the house. After a little scare, he continues doing what he was doing, which gives them ample space to run through the door. At this point he still doesn't know that they're there, until moments later when he finds their shoes. He goes to check on the safe and realizes the money is gone. 
Meanwhile, Alex and Rocky are going through the basement. They are shocked to find a girl roped up with army cords. The moment she moves, a ring attached to her notifies the vet that there is something going on in the basement. While there, Alex and Rocky find out that the girl is the same one that ran over his daughter. Rocky decides to help her, no matter what she had done. They try to go through the basement hatch, but the vet is waiting for them in front of it and starts shooting. He kills the girl that killed his daughter. As Alex and Rocky are running, the vet is calling to his baby, saying that his baby is dead, while holding the body of the dead girl. He then chases after them in the huge basement, after he turns off the electricity. Since they are also blinded in a way, he almost manages to catch them and strangle Alex, but the guy escapes with Rocky again. Outside of the basement, the dog, who is now fully awake, is waiting for them. The dog chases after them on the second floor and corners them in one of the rooms. The windows there are barred and it seems that they have no way to escape. Meanwhile, the vet catches up to them and is outside of the room with his dog and a gun. Rocky and Alex try to find a way to escape when she sees a vent on the wall. He tells her to go through the vent and he will keep the door safe. As she enters the vent, the old man and the dog break through the doors and attack Alex. He falls through a window onto a ceiling window, one level down. Back at the room, the dog follows Rocky in the vent by her smell and chases after her through the shaft. She jumps into a vertical shaft to escape it. The vet realizes where Alex is and shoots the window, hurling him down on the first floor. Alex runs again, but he catches up to him in the room where he keeps his gardening tools and where he had stashed Money's body. He beats Alex unconscious and stabs him with giant gardening scissors. Rocky wakes up in the shaft, hurt and in pain. She starts crawling through the vents again when she spots two openings, one going down in the house and the other outside the house. As she tries to break through the bars at the opening leading outside of the house, the vet grabs her from the other one. Rocky wakes up in the basement. She's tied up the same way as the other girl was. The vet is there and she begs him to let her go, saying she won't tell anyone about the girl. He explains, however, that holding the girl in the basement wasn't about torture or punishment for what she had done to his daughter. It was his crazy idea that, since she took his child from him, it would only be fair she should give him a child in return. He'd been holding her there because she was pregnant with his baby. With his insane logic, he comes to the conclusion that Rocky is to blame for her death and she should be held accountable. In the meantime, Alex wakes up. The vet hadn't stabbed him, but Money's body. He tricks the dog into the room and locks it in. Then, he unlocks the front door. Back in the basement, the vet is heating something up. He tells Rocky that she would now have to bear his child in the girl's stead. But since he's not a rapist, he wouldn't force himself on her, just his sperm. It's revealed that he was heating up his sperm, so he could inject it in her. Fortunately, Alex bursts into the basement at the right moment and the vet is unable to do what he wanted to do to Rocky. Alex chains the vet up and releases Rocky, who kicks the heck out of the old man, among other things. Alex tells Rocky that calling the police now is out of the question, that they should just leave the vet chained up in the basement, that two of them take the money and leave the basement, going to the front door. The moment Alex opens the door he gets shot by the vet, who succeeded in breaking free. It's already daylight outside, as Rocky starts to run. The dog after her. After a long chase, she finally gets to Money's car. But when the dog catches up to her she drops the bag with the money outside. Moreover, once in the car she realizes that she doesn't have the key. Rocky traps the dog inside the car in a clever way, but as soon as she is out and grabs the bag, the vet grabs her again and starts pulling her toward his house by her hair. When they get there, Rocky finds the remote for the alarm and activates it. The sound completely disorients the vet and she manages to push him down in the basement. Thinking that he's dead, she grabs the money and runs as the police is pulling over to the house. Rocky is sitting with her little sister in the bar of an airport. She hears the news on the bar TV, with the news anchor talking about what had happened. The vet had survived the fall. However, he didn't mention the fact that she was involved in the robbery as well, or that the money was missing. Rocky is free to live her best life with her sister in California. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.